Welcome to the Gear Slum, your one-stop shop for all things guitar, culture, nonsense. I'm Phil. And I'm Cole. We slum it hard so you don't have to. talk about oh you know when ahead. you talk about first phil what is that sports <laughs> because <laughs> because les canadiens de montreal les habitants canadiens the canadians have made it to the stanley cup final after having the worst record of any team to make the playoffs Okay. They were the uh they were the the fourth seed in the North Division. They only had 59 points. So the way that uh hockey works, you get 2 points for a win and 1 point for an overtime loss in your standings. So you actually get some credit for losing in overtime, which I think is kind of cool. Okay. They had 59 points. There were actually two teams Let's see here. Yeah. The Rangers and the Stars had 60 points and they didn't even make the playoffs. So the Canadians were the worst team to make the playoffs record wise by far. And they are now, and there are 16 teams that make the playoffs. And the Canadians are now in the Stanley Cup final. First game is, I think it's, we're recording this on June 27th, which happens to be another special day. Very special. It's my uh, 38th birthday. Oh, wait, maybe it's... T- oh, no, it is Monday. It's game one. They'll be playing Happy against the Happy birthday, Cole Thank you. Thank you. So we're all, we're all Quebecois for the next couple weeks, rooting on the Canadiens. I know you'll be cheering them on, Phil. Heck, yeah. Wait, are they, they the underdogs? As they try to win their first... Yes, and actually, the Lightning, who they're playing against, won the Stanley Cup last year. I will. Interestingly enough, even though they weren't like an amazing team in the regular season this year. I remember um, I was very young, and there was this middle aged woman who would babysit uh, for us sometimes. And now she, you're talking. And she would always watch, uh, she wanted to watch football all the time. And I remember saying, you know, being a very small child, not knowing anything, and I was like, so, uh, are you rooting for a team? And she goes, yeah. And I go, which one? And she goes, uh, well, I'm rooting for the, you know, so-and-so because they're losing. And I go, you're rooting for them because they're losing. And she goes, yeah. And then she goes, Oh, they just got a touchdown. Now I'm rooting for the other guy. And I was like, wait, are you serious? And she's like, yeah, I only root for the underdog. Like I watch football all the time and I do not That's... have any. It's interesting conviction. to be to be that into a sport and not have like a rooting interest whatsoever. Yes. Like like it's common like you'll see that a lot in college football. You won't you'll see it a lot where you'll watch games, you'll watch a lot of games in which you don't have a rooting interest other than rooting for the underdog. <laughs> but like there is a team you root for, there just happens to be like 300 teams or whatever. So. Yes. Right. And like they're just end not up playing watching today. a lot yeah. of games. But it's weird to just not have a favorite team at all. Yeah. I I thought it was strange at the time when I and I knew nothing about football and I know slightly more than I did then. And I realized, yeah, that I don't know anybody. I've never met anyone who who is that who participates in the sport in that way. To that degree, I guess. Yeah. Do you so you've never really watched football seriously in any way, right? Correct. I mean, it's a confusing sport. Like football, people talk about how confusing how confusing cricket is. Football is just as confusing, I think. We just 
happened to watch it from a young age. A lot of us do. So it, yeah, you know, yes, but I mean, it's confusing. There, like most sports have, like, like soccer. My understanding, correct me if I'm wrong. Soccer and basketball have definitely have technical aspects to them, but like you sit down, yeah, and you start watching, and you like can you say, pick up pretty point, quickly. The goal is to get the ball into the into the over hoop there, or the basket or the goal, and to stop them from getting it over there. Yeah, like, that's my and from my there, job. Is, like yes, yeah. And there's all kinds of deep strategy and everything like that. But football, just to understand it, even on a basic level, is like, you know, you'll be watching it and it's like, well, the goal is to move the ball all the way and get it in the end zone, right? But it has such a convoluted way of getting there, you know? Yeah. I I remember saying to somebody, again, being very young, going, why do they keep stopping all the time? (laughs) (laughs) Like, why can't they just keep moving? Move if okay if they want to get the ball over to that side yeah. then why are they they keep freaking stopping and standing around and talking to each other? It is a it is a weird it's a weird sport and then even just like everyone having such a specific because like again in soccer everyone has specific positions right but like they're still all kind of doing the same thing. Like in football, half the people, if they got hit with a throw, even if they weren't even trying to catch it, it would be a penalty. You know what I'm saying? Mm, like half mm-hmm. the people on the field are not even allowed to touch the ball in the same yeah. way the other half are, you know? That's, yes, that's very or like strange. in basketball and soccer, it's like, yeah, you know, the point guard might have a different role than the center, but what they're doing in the game is very similar. Yeah, it's weird. Hockey, on the other hand, is an amazing sport and it is it's also easy to understand i think like soccer and basketball wouldn't you agree yeah, yeah. on its yeah. base level yeah okay so what were you going to ask me at the beginning before we we got into our uh, obligatory uh sports talk i i was going to ask you if you've seen the tiktok of the the young dude who gets uh he gets uh shared over and over and he goes do you want poof of god yeah <laughs> i don't know why it makes me laugh every time you want poof of god and then people make it's fun of so, him for saying, uh, i can't tell god. if that's like a satirical account or not that guy no 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 that guy is he 100% seems very sincere genuine. yes in fact, he's like pretty sad. You know how you know he's sin- sincere. This is how you know, is that his act, his actual account, like he has like his Venmo and and stuff. Like, please support my ministry. And then it's like his actual. Oh yeah. Like oh, of course he's trying to actual. Money. If you're if you are, if you are letting people know how to give you actual money, you're not joking. <laughs> Yeah, (laughs) that's true. I mean, actually, Uh, that would be kind of, that would be hilarious if it's like, this is a satirical account. I'm a pretend uh, celebrity TikTok pastor, and I need to make a living too, so please give me money. (laughs) Yeah. Or what if it was just a guy, and, and let's be honest, this probably exists in religions at large. A person who doesn't actually believe it deep down. Oh, but like, oof. you Gross. know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I. But it's that, like, hey, this is a good way to make a living. That a lot thought of idiots did not occur to me. That thought that that is very gross and very dark. I, yeah. I, my assumption was, uh, just because I've met I've met so many guys like this, where it's like they 100 percent believe that you know, God has called them to do this thing. And then, and therefore it's everyone's responsibility to finance. Yeah, exactly. That thing. It's like, well, I believe that God called me to play video games for a living, you know? Yeah. So you guys better pay for it. Dude, that would be, that would be a funny bit. The, 
it's also weird. It seems like there's been a lot of TikToks lately of like, and some of them are like old. They're clips from like this one show that I can't remember who did it. Was it like Stephen Fry, maybe like some British show where they're basically like debating about God and people are like trying to prove that God exists. And it's like, what? that's not the point. Like you can't prove that God exists. That's like why faith is a thing, you know? And it's weird that people are like, I don't know. Do you see those same TikToks or is my algorithm just screwed up? I, I don't, but I'm, I was raised in a culture that was very, very preoccupied with that. Like, but like, what on earth are you going to say to somebody who's an atheist, who's like, has no interest in God whatsoever? Like, you can't, you can't prove the existence of God, you know? I, I agree with you. (laughs) Like you can prove, you can, you can like show this is the evidence that has made me believe that God exists. Right. But it's never the type of evidence that's going to just be like universally accepted. It's always evidence that you perceive in a way that a lot of other people don't perceive that way, you know? Yeah, it's yes, totally. And it's, it always, the thing that's the thing that to me seems crazy is like you just said, like, well, that's one thing. If I'm going to say, Hey, Here's what has changed. Here's my how life how my life has changed. Here's how life my life is better. That's like you know, it's not that it's it's not valid. It's just like yeah. I'm just telling you my experience, right? Yeah, it's not like and, and it's not something that can be disproven or anything. It's just like right. this is why it's important to me, but also like you have to you have to recognize that like your experience is not really going to translate to somebody else, you know. I mean, it it might I guess it's worth a shot. Yeah. Yeah. It might, but it, but like to get into arguments about it and I'm, you know, I'm talking as somebody who served a mission and like, let's be honest, missionaries get into a lot of arguments about who's right and who's wrong. And maybe that's why I recognize how stupid it is, but. So I was talking recently with a young man who's about to leave, uh, on his, uh, on his mission. And he was telling me that like the church has very, has, has lightened up a mission for my church. Yes. Nice. Not, not, not one of my, not a mission. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Mishication. Um, uh, and he said the church is like, he was talking about how like social media, what is, oh, they're giving him a, a phone that has a sp- specific kind of software. So you, well, it's open it's to just like, like set up with a specific image that doesn't, doesn't let you like whatever, you know, it like limits what you can do with it. Right. I'm just saying like, I'm shocked that it's like even the idea of like having a cell phone, like you, what you yeah. had, like totally. you couldn't email or anything like, or you could email yeah. one person one week. Right. Is that how it was? Well, I mean, you could email whoever you wanted on, on like the one day a week. Oh, okay. But okay. yes, they've definitely, so it used to be that we could only call home twice a year on Christmas and Mother's Day. Dude, that's wild to me. Yeah. But I honestly think it was good. Like it was good for me. Cause I didn't really miss my family at all. Like I was happy to be gone. And, uh, and I think for some people it would probably just be a distraction or something, but to- absolutely. Um, yes. But, but yeah, so like you can, like my nephew's on a mission who weirdly, we mentioned how it's my birthday today. He has the exact same birthday as me, not the Whoa. exact same. He was born a different year, but, um, but we were over at my parents' house last week and they just like called him while we were there, you know, I guess it was father's day. So that was, I don't think they call him every week, but I think you can, if you want to, you could call like once a week and probably text and Mm. stuff. So, so yeah, it is definitely different. Well, and part of it too, is like they use social media to their benefit. I think, you know, like that's how they contact people a lot of times probably. Mm. 
or how they like set up events or things like that, you know? Okay. So yeah, it's a different, it's a different world than when I was a missionary. Back in my day. And it's also not seen as like a mandatory thing quite as much as it used to be. It's doing the mission. Kind of like, yeah. Weird. It, it's kind of, well, and especially a lot of people just aren't, uh, especially like there are a lot of different reasons why you might, why they might just say you don't need to serve a mission or kind of like s- disqualify, but not in a negative way. Like if you had severe anxiety or something like that, because missions, I mean, depending on who you are, they can be a pretty bad experience. I'm assuming, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, like it's a pretty, it's pretty taxing emotionally and otherwise. I would so say I depending on who you are and depend, depending on where you are sent. Yeah, totally. Right. Like if, like if you, so have- there are some, there are some cases where someone will, where a lot of people will only be sent stateside or will be sent places that are fairly close to home, you know? Yeah. If they're not Americans, United States Americans, <laughs> USA Americans. I personally believe. <laughs> so. We are excited to have a new sponsor this week, and it is none other than Rod Iron Effects, featuring Ed Chu, Ed Chu Brute. They are releasing a new overdrive pedal today, and the Gear Slum is the first to know about it. It is called the Sting JFET Overdrive, and it's another Middle Earth themed pedal to pander to all you Tolkien nerds. And that's Tol- like J.R.R. Tolkien for those paying attention at home. It features lots of low end for those lonely gigs when you're playing without a bassist because you got in a fight about playing original music versus 90s covers. <laughs> it's got the crunch of a broken leg from a motorcycle. If you can't tell, I'm reading this cold, so you're getting a genuine reaction here. It's got the crunch of a broken leg from a motorcycle wreck. And the distortion of an English teacher reading one-star Amazon reviews in a halting cadence blowing right past all punctuation and pronunciation norms. It cuts through the mix more easily than a router bit through the back of a Mustang. If you like tube screamers, that's irrelevant to this ad. This pedal sounds nothing like a tube screamer. This first batch is all acid etched and features a variety of weird finishes. Go get one at wroughtironeffects.com and show your support for pedals of size. Hashtag POS. Hashtag big is beautiful. And that's wrought iron, W-R-O-U-G-H-T iron, or iron, as Norm MacDonald would pronounce it, effects. And that's effects.com. And we thank Ed Chu for sponsoring this week's episode. And as a PS... Uh, We are very sorry to hear about lollygagger effects going out of business. RIP in peace. Anyways, so Phil, what have we, uh, what have we been working on the last couple days? Um, well, I spent, I spent $4 to rent a movie and watch it. And how, and how worth it was it? It was very worth it. Cause I think I can, maybe I'll even watch it again. I have like another. (laughs) 48 hours, or like 40 hours, hours at this point, probably. Yeah. yeah. That I could watch uh, it. Okay. So. Oh, Aaron said. What? Oh, okay. He's coming soon. Oh. He will jump on soon. Okay. Okay. He always, he throws in, yes, I will after I feed my child. Like, yeah, we know you have children, Aaron. You don't have to rub it in our face. <laughs> okay, I... should we hold off? Well, let's, we can start, I guess. We can start, I guess. Actually, I... do you have any, do you have any guitar related news? Guitar related news. Um, no, I don't. Uh, I will. I'll, you know what? I'll say this. I'll say this. I, um, we, as, uh, my wife and I are, um, fully vaxxed and, yeah. um, and proud of it. 
is it weird going in like what's it like in california is do you still wear masks when you go to the grocery store and stuff dude i think my county is a lot like your area probably so <laughs> <laughs> like i so i'm i'm currently wearing a t-shirt that says peace love and a vaccine and i so that's I your way a, that's your way of saying like i'm I'm not wearing a mask, but it's not because I'm a lunatic. It's because I'm vaccinated. Yes. Yes. I, okay. I'll tell you this. I went to, uh, I, I went to Starbucks, uh, recently with a group of friends, uh, and a, a group of acquaintances. And I walked in, there's a big sign on the outside that says, uh, if you are fully masks are optional if you are fully vaccinated. Okay. That's what the okay. sign says, which obviously I, like really what it means is nobody's going to wear a mask because the people who aren't vaccinated don't want to wear one anyways. So I walked in without a mask because I am fully vaccinated yeah. and the acquaintances that also came in, one of them was wearing a mask and the rest of them weren't. And then it came up in conversation. They started joking afterwards. We were sitting outside and they were joking. Yeah, I identify as vaccinated. <laughs> and I was like, Ugh. I can't believe you're I'm gonna murder those people. Gen like you're you're saying it's one thing to say it like as a joke, but like you're actually living your life. Exactly. Like it, it's not ironic. Anymore. Yes, that's that's very sad to me. And but, also you're finding a way to be like not only anti-vaxxer but also transphobic at the same time yeah that's true <laughs> like <laughs> that is true maybe i can a be jab. an a-hole in two ways right now yes yes it's a jab at yeah Ugh. yeah anyway um so uh so yeah so my my family my family my family and i have been attending a new church and feeling like maybe kind of sort of maybe this is where we should um uh -huh. you know attend and be involved in and i've been talk i talked to a couple of the people that um play music there and so i was like ooh okay need to get my uh my stuff together to yeah. be able to to play with play, them yeah to play it uh to play there and i i like it was it was kind of one of the things that i i definitely i'd definitely be playing there if if i said hey can i play here that it would be like you know It'd be a slam dunk yeah uh so like they would need you yeah yeah that's pretty sweet i mean I, yeah, I don't know how I, f what do you and mean? This is a I whole, how you feel about it? Yeah. I don't know. The, Explain I yourself. Know. I don't know. I, I, maybe Aaron could ask the questions that need to be asked here. I don't. Oh, cause I'm too Mormon. Yeah. And not in a bad way, but like, <laughs> it's just like, you know, it's, it's the, the idea of choice. Yeah. In which church you go to? Is that, yeah. Are you saying you, you have don't... like theological trepidation? Cause you're not, Maybe... you're not sure if you're totally sold on the church yet. Yeah. But like, okay. Okay. So here's, okay. Here's the thing you have, you have said uh, to me, maybe don't if, put words if, in my mouth. Okay, if you want to edit this out, <laughs> you can. I might uh, have to edit it out. Uh, you have said that there are things that you disagree with, you know. Um, yeah. And and it's like, but it it's not the the disagreeing is not is not enough of a thing to be like, and so therefore maybe I should I should just yeah get out of here. Well, like the right? things that I disagree with aren't like fundamental to the religion it's like yes a lot of it's like culture that i disagree with and stuff right you know? right 
And the fact that it's not, well, I, I think part of the the problem, I, it's it's definitely a double-edged sword for uh, Protestants, is the second one guy said, hey, I don't know if I agree with this. I think I'm going to be, I'm going to do a different thing. Yeah, like, like that's where just, that's where Protestantism came from in the first place, right? But the <laughs> second you the second you do it one time, now it's just sort of like the floodgates yeah. are open, and then any stupid disagreement is enough of is potentially enough of a enough of a reason to pack up and leave. Yeah, yeah, and that's I think that's in some We're, ways I I see that as a good thing. Because I think that there's a check and balance that's good about that, but in a lot of ways, that's a really big freaking problem. Yeah, because it's just... like it's pretty, it's it's like pretty arrogant to think you know better than anyone else necessarily. You know that yes, that's definitely part of it. That's definitely. It's part interesting of it. though, because obviously that happens a lot in my church too. But most of the time when people have stuff that they disagree with that they can't resolve, they just don't go to any church, you know? Right. Like right. there are, there are rare cases of people who leave my, the Mormon church and go to another Protestant religion or even Catholicism. I think that's pretty rare, but um, because Catholics aren't out like banging down your door, trying to get you to join or whatever, but like, <laughs> they'll they'll join another protestant church and you better believe those are the most vocal anti-mormons you can find you know yeah yes because they they they're enlightened now you know but it's like i think the fact that it's like <sighs> well yeah but i mean this is like a totally manipulative way to say this i don't actually believe this but it kind of reminds me a little bit of somebody, you know, like the person who is, who is like consistently getting divorced and remarried. Right. And like, they won't shut up about how great their current wife is and how crappy their ex-wives are. I say wife. Cause let's be honest. It's, it's more common for it to be men, but you know what I'm saying? Like it's kind of the same thing. And in the back of your, in the back of your mind, you're thinking like, well, all this bad stuff you're saying about your ex-wife, you're just going to be saying it about your current wife in a couple of years when you divorce her, you know? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. And again, I know that's manipulative because, or it's like, uh, that's, that's not a good analogy because in a lot of cases, like somebody's leaving a marriage because of abuse and the same goes for religion. Somebody's leaving a religion because they see really immoral things happening or because there's abuse or, you know, right. It's a power or whatever it might be, you know? Yeah, so, but there is a certain there is a certain level of you know part of it too is like confirmation bias of like I think you're trying to convince yourself that you made the right decision, so you have to kind of be very adamant about it, you know. Yeah, yes, but I think for somebody to. Leave like it's just a way bigger deal for somebody to leave uh the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Oh yeah, for sure. And for, like because that is not built into the system. Right. Like our system is if you live somewhere anywhere in the world, there is a church that you should attend. Right. And for you guys, like a even one, just moving, it's like part of the thing is like, oh, we're moving, so we got to find a new church to join. And I hope we can find one that lines up with our personal theology pretty well, you know? Right. Right. So the, the church that we're, um, are you keeping an eye on the participant list, by the way? It usually dings. Oh, okay. You know, better than, you know, better than I do. Yeah. Um, so this is the sad, and this is, you know, partly, again, partly my county, um, but, uh, you know, it's, this is the sad truth. One of the sad truths um, is the church that we've been attending is located 
in a um, uh, an office complex where three other freaking churches <laughs> meet. <laughs> so everyone pulling into this one parking lot. <laughs> You're like staring at you're staring each other down, like oh yeah. How dumb? How freaking dumb is that? Yeah, like it's and a they literally have signs up, like, and they're they all are to... they all Christian religions? Yeah, they're all they're all they're all like Protestant. Protestant. They're all yeah. Um, but the, it's literally, I, I that just seems every time every time we pull in and I point at the signs, and, you know, with arrows, like, you know, yeah, this way, this way. And I just, I laugh out loud and I shake my head. God, so weird and dumb. It is weird. But I don't know. So, okay. So then here's a question. Cause I, I kind of am, am in the same boat where like, if I, if, if there was like something, uh, theologically that I majorly disagreed with, that would be a hard thing for me because I also work at the church. <laughs> yes. Right. And it's kind of the same thing where like, I wonder how often people choose a church where it's like, man, there's only, I just, I agree with 95% of it, but I just disagree with a few things here, but it's like a really good situation. The, you know, the worship team is really good and I like playing with them and stuff. And I like the music and stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. like that factors into it. Right. It's not, it's not nothing. Right. Well, and that's the that's the thing is that like I think for for you uh, or anyone anyone Mormon, it, like it, I have it, a lot more to lose than just like I'm gonna I have to leave this worship team or whatever, but but it's right. still something, right? But like, but for you, th there are certain like there are certain things of like that for for Protestants like deal breakers. The bar is so much lower. You know, like you said, um, meaning like this is, to get you to leave one church and go to another, it's like, yes, well, that's something I might've done just because I moved anyways. So it doesn't. Yeah. Well, I'll, t I'll like okay. So here's an world. example. A Aaron, Aaron and I probably both know between the two of us, dozens of people that would say, um, I knew I was going to one church, but a pastor or worship leader left. And I just didn't like the next person that they, they got that replaced him. I just didn't like him. So I left the church, which is such a, like, yeah. that is, I, and I, for, for the, the viewer, I, you know what, there's, we probably have, we probably have a few people that I'm, that I might be pissing off because that's exactly their situation. <laughs> And they believe it's like a yeah. co totally valid reason to like, you know, that that's enough of a reason. I think that's like partially why there's some like, there's some benefit to the fact that in my church, like where you live determines what church you go to, but also the people who are in leadership in that church are going to rotate all the time, you know, mm -hmm. like the longest term. So like the bishop, who's like the head of the entire ward they only serve for five years. So like right. you'll end up having a lot of people who are leading the congregation who are just different over time, you know, and it's almost like a good exercise to be like, well, you're stuck with this person that you don't love a hundred percent, but it'll be, <laughs> they'll be gone soon. It's kind of like serving a mission. Like, f like you're stuck with a whole bunch of other people who you did not choose yeah. And you have to live with them 24 seven for like three months or whatever. Right. Before you get and another I, one. And I feel like that's. That's there. There's. There are benefits to that. Like it, it you could say like, yeah. Oh, that's nothing but you know that, well, that sucks. Like at least I have a choice. Okay. But you could also like acknowledge yeah. the fact that life is full of things that you don't have yeah. control over. You have to interact with a lot of people. You have to interact yeah. with a lot of people that you don't choose. You don't choose your kids for one. You yeah. don't choose 
I mean, you chose your kid, but that's a different story. <laughs> but like, <laughs> most people you didn't don't. know what he was going to be like, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. And you don't choose your boss or your coworkers or what. I mean, you do kind of like you can quit or whatever, but, mm-hmm. but yeah, it, it is a good, I, I think it's a good, you know, there's a lot of wisdom in that learning how to get along with people you don't agree with, you know? Yeah. Like there's, there's good and bad. Which we as a society, not we as a society have gotten really bad at that. Mm. We've like completely forgotten how to get along with people we disagree with, you know? Yes. Cause everyone that disagrees with you is evil. <laughs> right. I know you're used to hearing Aaron talk about gun street wiring shop, but you know what? I'm going to talk about them this week. Because they are our amazing, loyal flagship sponsor. And they do amazing stuff. Um, They make hand-wired wiring harnesses for all of your guitars and basses. I have them in many of my guitars and basses. At both of my basses. And they work amazing. Sound great. I have a five-way wiring harness in my Telecaster. And it unlocks wonderful sounds especially the uh series setting on a telecaster which i've always loved but he puts a little extra magic in there that uh honestly i i I don't even know exactly what it is he's got some tone bleed magic he's got some other stuff makes your tone knob a lot more useful than it would be otherwise he just goes does great stuff and if you're a member of the slum hard street crew you get a discount on all of your Gun Street Wiring Shop products. So check them out at GunStreetWiringShop.com and they will make your guitars sound better. That is Aaron's guarantee to you. Well, uh, I think we need to start talking about this so, fantastic movie. But so, so your church that you're going to, oh. you're still just not 100% sure. Yeah, I mean, and I don't know, I guess I feel I feel bad about saying that because of all the things that I've been saying. You know? Like it, it is the the fact that I'm the fact that I'm hesitant am I just being like am I being lame and like or or is it the case that it's like, hey, because I have a choice, I should exercise my choice? You know? Yeah. I don't know. Are you but it's the it? same, like, it is like a hard balance because it's not like if you were to make an analogy to like marriage, well, you didn't marry this church, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, you married your wife. And so if for better or for worse, you're going to find a way to get through things, you know, assuming they're not too bad. And there's a lot of value in that, but like you haven't made necessarily a commitment to, to this church. Right. That's true. That's true. But it is like, there is something to be said for like, okay, I'm going to take it for what it is and make the most of it, you know? So yeah, it is a hard, right. it's a hard balance to find. Well, because I think, just like with marriage, like I could, you know, and I'm talking like I'm making the decision by myself and I'm not, but I like, you know, there's guys that are like, oh yeah, marriage is like, that's too big of a deal. So I'm just not going to get married. <laughs> right. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, which is like, okay. So then that's it, just like pure fear. Basically every six months you're just with a different special lady friend. And I guess, you know, there, yeah. I know there are people that do that with church too. Like they literally, they never fully commit. And it's like every, yeah, yeah. every year or so they're like, ah, yeah, this doesn't feel right. And then they leave. But then like, that means you're not getting, you're not getting nearly as much out of the experience in general. Absolutely. As you would be if you were just like, okay, I'm in a hundred percent and I'm going to go for it. Right, which is I think And it means could... it's harder when something when something does go wrong, especially if it's something that goes very wrong, like if there's a case of 
you know, somebody in a position of authority abusing somebody or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like that makes it harder to resolve in your mind. But it's the same. The same can be said for like, well, I'm I'm never going to get married because I don't want to have my heart broken or I'm never going to fall in love or whatever. And it's like, well, never falling in love sounds kind of miserable, too, you know, <laughs> like. Right. Or just having like these. Uh, not that. Not that dating relationships aren't meaningful, but like there's a there's something to be said for like just a long term commitment. And a, yeah, like part of what makes them meaningful is the commitment. Right, like if you right, know, right. if you know, you can always just leave at any time, then it, it's inherently less meaningful, you know, regardless of what anybody says. And some people would like to dispute that, I'm sure. But it's, it, this, and it's the same way with like open marriages or whatever, like you're never going to, it's just not going to be as fulfilling and you're not going to have the level of commitment you would if it was just a single person, you know. Maybe that's like a controversial thing to say, but probably not for most people. Not for my county or your county. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there is something to that, that like the level of commitment, the further you go in and the harder it is to back out, the more meaningful it potentially becomes. I'm sure that's not like true across the board, you know, but hmm. I think it's true to a certain extent. Yeah, for sure. Um, but honestly, we need to stop talking about all this sissy crap as they would say in under siege. And we need to talk about the, I thought it was an eighties movie, but it's a 1992 action film under siege. Yes. You say siege or siege? Ooh, I like that. I I've always said siege, but I like saying under siege. I've always said siege, I think, or at least I don't know. I think I've said siege. Okay. So what's your experience of this movie? Okay. You've seen you had seen this movie many times, right? Yes. So as as a young as a young adolescent, um, I was this 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 movie was very influential in in my life in my uh, budding masculinity. In fact, I I want to say this might have been no, that's not true. I was gonna say this this might have been the movie that that exposed me to uh, Navy SEALs, but I think the movie Navy SEALs exposed me to Navy SEALs. And that one's probably, it's got to be earlier. Was, was GI Jane, was that specifically Navy SEALs or was that just it was like specifically Navy SEALs? Generic military. No, it was specific. Okay. She's because it was like a big, and she deal. was going like, to be like the first. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That she was, was, was that a real story? No. I mean, <sighs> was it like based on? the first female Navy SEAL or something like that? I, I want to oh, say it's a currently fictional there's story still... of the first woman. There have oh, been women to, who to have... undergo special operations training similar to the Navy SEALs. So I wonder if they could, I wonder if they couldn't actually call it Navy SEALs because of like, who knows copyright or something. I think in the, in the movie, they, they say that it's, it's, they, they say they talk about Navy SEALs. Okay, it's kind of next specific. week we're watching we're watching GI Jane next week. Okay, I'm. Um, and who is? Oh, it's Demi Moore. Yeah, All right. yes. that was like a big deal. Yes, I I want to say that there was something. Gosh, we we've, we've got military guys that listen to this podcast. Please, if if anybody, if this needs correcting, please correct me. <laughs> I want I it most say... certainly will need correcting. <laughs> I want to say that there was something that was passed around the time of the movie of women can now uh, have military roles that are combat based, whereas like prior to that, women could serve in the military, but the, uh, only yeah. the jobs that were not just like specifically yeah. like 
they're like computer nerds or whatever. Yeah, or sure, you can come be a nurse or or a cook. Yeah. Like we're gonna talk about. I like about how today. you said that as if as if that was like less sexist than nurse to assume that a woman or a cook, yeah, those are or two things. Those are your your choices. Those possibilities choices. are endless, women. <laughs> nurse or cook. Nurse or cook. Uh <laughs> so like there was there's something there there was something uh some rule or you know standard that was like women cannot participate yeah. in these jobs in the military and i don't remember if it was like if it was actually changed around that time like around the early 90s or if it was if it was that they were talking about like should it be changed but i know gi jane was one of the movies and then the other one was the meg ryan one that is based on a true story and she was like a a helicopter pilot that was not like the courage it, under fire. Yes. Matt Damon, Denzel and, Washington and Denzel Washington. Yes. Um, that sounds like a Michael Crichton book. If I've ever heard it. I, and I believe it's based on a true story and that the, the woman was not, she was like, they were giving her a, some kind of a combat medal. And that was like a big deal because women aren't supposed to do combat. And it wasn't a com. She was like the only one around and she was like having to like do some combat yeah. stuff. Combat things. So they were like, here's your medal, but don't do that. Don't let it happen again. Yeah. I don't think she was combating. Dead, so. Yeah. Stop acting so tough. Stop. She got a medal doing... and a dishonorable discharge. Are you serious? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> that would have been pretty great. I thought, I thought you were. It's like I you, you were obeyed. It. You disobeyed a direct order, which was not to combat. <laughs> a woman's place is <laughs> as a know, nurse or a cook, as Phil not... mentioned. <laughs> Those are the two available jobs. Anyway, anyway. So at least I said she could be a computer nerd. That's not a, yes, that's not a woman job. Pretty progressive. Okay. Here's a question for you. Okay. The term janitor, right? Or custodian okay. is okay. janitor. Like is janitor frowned upon? I don't know. Why do we, why do we name women Janet? That's a good question. That isn't okay. where I was headed with this, but that's also a valid right. thing. So thank you. So custodian, let's say custodian. Yeah. What's the stereotypical gender of a custodian? Uh, a male. Yeah. But then you think about like, as a custodian, well, I'm thinking of like in a hotel, right? You have a maid, which stereotypically would be a woman, but I guess mm -hmm. a custodian isn't cleaning in a hotel. You would still have like the maintenance man or something like that. Yeah. A custodian, it, like a, a hotel will have probably a custodial staff and a maid staff, both. They're not the same okay. job. Cause yeah, I guess like cleaning out public spaces and cleaning out private spaces is different, but it is still weird that like those two, those two fields are pretty similar. Right. And I guess it's like doctor and nurse. Yeah. And you know, doctors can be women. Really? Yeah. It is. It's such Not a weird thing that like, it, it seems kind of arbitrary. Well, and it's the same for doctors and nurses, right? Like a hundred years ago, why even then is it? Cause like when they thought women's minds are so weak that they couldn't handle like the rigors of, you know, whatever doctors had to do, but they could just do the lesser stuff or that a nurse had to do. <laughs> It's, it's weird to me that like, I get why a lot of, a lot of like sexist roles exist, mm -hmm. but some of them seem just completely arbitrary, you know? Oh, holy crap. I'm looking at paying attention to what I'm saying. I'm listening. I'm listening to what you're saying. I agree. I'm, I'm looking up. <laughs> oh, well movies. then if you agree, then I know you must've been listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking up movies 
Navy, m- movies with Navy SEALs. Okay. And before, before. Major Pain. No, no, no. Before both, both Under Siege and Navy SEALs, starring, starring Charlie Sheen, was The Rescue. Do you know that movie? No. Oh, the my rescue. gosh. I need to find this freaking movie and watch it with my son. So a bunch of kids on an army base. Their parents are all Navy SEALs, and their parents go do a mission and get kidnapped, and oh, the, the kids, kids decide to <laughs> rescue their their dads. So it's like heavyweights, but for Navy SEALs instead of fat people. Yes, and it's not – it is definitely not like – I mean, there are laughs along the way, but it's definitely yeah. – uh, it's, it's, like it's a well, like Goonies. Well – I mean, Goonies is kind of a comedy, but not fully, yeah. right? I want to say that the, the it's tone, even less of a comedy than Goonies. Yes, the tone of this movie is less of a comedy, uh, but there is an element of like you you kind of have to stop and go. But they're freaking kid, like they're kids though. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like at every step, it was like so we've got a contact in North Korea, and then they they meet the contact. The contact's like who are you guys? And they're like, we're the team. And they're like, no, you're kids. (laughs) You are children. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not going into combat with you. (laughs) It's like, no, but we have to save our dads. And they're like, okay, let's do it. (laughs) (laughs) They're like, okay, you children talked us into it. So I think that movie might be, might have been my first exposure to Navy SEALs. To the concept of Navy SEALs. Yes. And to how cool you would think a Navy SEAL was. Although the movie does not, does not frame Navy SEALs in the best of light if they get kidnapped and children can rescue them. You know, that's not, that doesn't make them sound as cool or, or tough or yeah. whatever. But dude, we, we definitely should have, we should watch Navy SEALs. Charlie Sheen and Michael Bean. Have you seen that movie? No. Oh, so freaking cool. And not cool. And it's very just bad. called Navy Seals. Heck yeah, dude! Oh, there's a whole Wikipedia page of movies featuring Navy Seals, and That's one of them what I'm is looking Navy at right Seals. now. A squad of Navy Seals are given a chance to stop an enemy leader that has stolen American missiles. Oh, so good! It sounds riveting, dude. Okay, guys, I hate to do this, but. Our Under Siege discussion is going to wait for next week's episode. So, in the meantime, those following along at home, you should go watch Under Siege. It's available on Netflix right now. And you will have an amazing time. And then you can follow along with our discussion next week. And there may even be a surprise visitor who used to be on the podcast every week, but lately has more important things to do, apparently. So, in the meantime... I will tell you, thanks for friendship.